What is wrong with the Southern African development community? Why are they not doing their job? They are silent on crises such as Mozambique's civil war and the human rights abuses in Zimbabwe. Civil society groups, opposition leaders and commentators have criticized SADC over its inaction regarding the region's problems. For discussion on why the SADC doesn't intervene, I'm joined by the Institute for Security Studies senior researcher, Liesl Lowe Vaudron. Very good morning to good you. Good morning. What's up with SADC? What are they doing? They're not doing much in terms of crisis at the moment. I think that is the frustration. When people look at, for example, ECOWAS, the uh, West African economic community that's uh, sending delegations of heads of state to Mali and have you know, got rid of unpopular heads of state in Gam the Gambia and so on. So there's a frustration, as you said, among civil society, but also even officials and government officials uh, in the region because especially when it comes to a country like Mozambique. Zimbabwe, we know it's the former liberation movements. That's a tricky issue which, you know, we can discuss. But, but Mozambique, for example, um, one would have expected more action because there is a threat to the region. Mozambique is, in a sense, a victim. So it's not about shielding, uh, you know, one uh, former liberation movement and another. Um, so I think we have to look at it uh, on two levels, the heads of state, but also the institution of SADC based in Gaborone and its weaknesses in a way. Mm. I mean, of course, you need political will. You need the heads of state to say, okay, we're going to work through SADC, which in the case of Mozambique would be crucial because South Africa can't be seen to be bilaterally sending troops or any other mediation or so on. To, it has to go through SADC. So clearly so, there is no political will, if that's... Where yes, we I, I, we've had one meeting in the, in, in, on the 19th of May on Mozambique. There's hesitancy, but there's also, um, as I say, institutional weakness. We've seen uh, the African Union, for example, in the last 20 years, very slowly but steadily evolving into an organization that is not just an organization of heads of state mm. that sort of protect one another. But when there's a crisis in... Um, the Central African Republic, Somalia, Darfur, the African Union has upped its game. So SADC, um, I think there is a need and there is a will to reform the institution itself. So, I mean, it's, it's a difficult thing because uh, all the talk of regional integration and solidarity and so on, you still have sovereign, we have 16 member states of SADC. Mm -hmm. So work needs to be done on that level. And then uh, you know, um, meetings should be held, summits should be held. We had one virtual summit. Okay, it's, it's very difficult now to do tricky things like negotiating about what to do about a terrorist group um, online. But you um, can start. I but mean, you can start. And, and uh, you know, we are now moving to level one. So heads of state can have, you, you can have the troika of the organ of politics, defense, and security of SADC, which South Africa is now part of since August we can convene a summit so that at least the people of Mozambique can feel SADC is, is doing something, even though, uh, you know, it is, it's still, there's, it's a complex and very fast evolving situation. I mean, you, you spoke about uh, the liberation issue, and, yes. and that's where SADC is, is incredibly weak, isn't it? I mean, with, with Zimbabwe, you know, South Africa doing the same sort of thing, not to criticize yeah. a former liberator. I mean, yes. that's one of the things holding them back. It is, and that's always the big complaint about SADC. Mm. But as I said, in the case of a country like Mozambique, one would have thought that that solidarity would kick in and we'd say, right, yeah. uh, you know, what can we do to help? So it's often a thing of sovereignty rather than, um, okay, in the case of Zimbabwe, as I say, there is the, the loyalties, but that's also, you know, I think... <sighs> The ANC government in South Africa is not a military-led regime like in ZANU, like ZANU PF is in Zimbabwe. It's not as if there's so many similarities. It's a historical loyalty and and so on. But, but there might be an opportunity even in Zimbabwe for South Africa and for the region to, uh, you know, to intervene. So I mean, there is that solidarity, but. We've seen, um, you know, 20, 25 years later that um, other dynamics are at play. Mm. So what I'm saying is we should look at the institution itself and compare it with other institutions like the ECOWAS Secretariat in Abuja and say how can we, 
How can we improve How it? can we be like them? I mean, in the meantime, this sort of apathy and the fact that it is, you know, quite frankly, a pathetic body, where does it leave countries like Mozambique? Where does it leave other member states who would like to get involved? As you say, you can't just go storming in. So yes. what's the alternative? Yes, and I mean, for Mozambique, for example, so there have been calls, bilateral discussions, of course, behind the scenes with Angola, Zimbabwe, South Africa. Um, the, the, the danger, I think, uh, Jane, is we talk about African solutions for African problems. The danger in Mozambique is that you've got massive multinational companies, you've got international interests. This issue is being discussed in the European Parliament, it's being discussed in, uh, 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 in the U.S. as well. Um, so you could see, we've had Russian mercenaries even in, in Mozambique, you could see international non-African intervention. And then a couple of months down the line, we're going to say, you know, oh, you know, France uh, comes in into West Africa and, you know, we, we, we oh. get uh, um, outraged over that. But sorry, I'm just going to jump. I mean, that's sure. so frustrating, isn't it? I mean, we have nothing really to play with and work with, but, you know, God forbid somebody comes in from from somewhere else to, to help. Yes. And the thing is, the re I mean, you see it in Mali, the response to the French being there. It's, it's bloody. There is, yes, there's a, there's a backlash. Mm. But we still have an opportunity. I mean, there is, um, and I think one of the opportunities is the fact that this insurgency in Mozambique, in Cabo Delgado, is taking place exactly, literally, a few a hundred kilometers from where there are these vast interests. And they are South African economic interests. We mustn't forget that, you know, people say, oh, can this spread to us? If we can contain this insurgency, there are huge economic opportunities mm. also for South Africa. In the biggest investment the African continent has seen uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the, the gas exploration there, we are talking of tens of billions of dollars uh, um, that have already been pledged. Sa Standard Bank, there are, are, are South African banks, the DBSA that is involved there, other companies. So. Um, we can't just say, oh, it's going to stay there, you know, um, it's, it's in the interest of the region. And I know Minister, um, South Africa's Minister Pando has said, yes, but we're waiting for Mozambique to ask us to get involved, ask SADC and so on. Mm. But, you know, that it seems, I think we've moved on from there now. Mm. It is a regional threat. Um, and it could be a regional opportunity, that area of Mozambique. Lisa, we're going to have to leave it there. I mean, yes, it's a sure. fascinating topic. It's a big topic. It'll be interesting mm. to see what works with ECOWAS that we could adopt exactly. almost immediately. And we've been trying to get to speak to SADC, and we have failed. Mm. But SADC, I would like to speak to you about so many of the issues that we touched on this morning.